OpenAI released Deep Research yesterday, which is an AI agent that can create comprehensive reports by using extended test time compute. And I was really interested in it because I think I do deep research in some aspect. And I was also really impressed by the performance on the Humanities Last Exam benchmark. You can see that OpenAI Deep Research more than doubles the performance of the O3 mini, medium, and high models, almost triples the performance on OpenAI O1. And so I think this is a really big step forward in terms of AI agents and giving AIs autonomy to do tasks. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to see how well it could do in specifically the field of research that I did my PhD in. There are very few things in this world that I would consider myself to be an expert in, but considering I literally wrote a dissertation on something, I think that's something I can say I am somewhat of an expert in. And I have my thesis here because I wanted to have it here to reference and sort of compare with what OpenAI's deep research model was going to do. So the plan that I had for it was that I wanted to have it create a research review on the state of my field of research in graduate school. So I was doing black hole mass measurements with this very specific telescope. I won't get really into the scientific nitty gritty. I just wanted to give you some context as to what I wanted it to do and that I have some semblance of an idea of how it should respond. And I gave it this prompt and then came back with some questions just for clarification in terms of if it wanted me to include these old references, how deep of a theoretical discussion should go into, the citation style, and the table and plot. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that I don't think it's able to create plots quite yet. I think that's something that they said they'll give it to deep research later in terms of using Python to create plots. And I just don't think that it was quite ready for that. So that was probably a, that was too much of an ask to ask it to make a plot. But the table is something it definitely could and did do. And so I just told it my preferences and then it went off to think about this prompt and spent 15 minutes doing some research. Now, I did take a video of this while it was going and I find this entertaining because I was taking a shower while this was going. I literally just set the prompt in, in motion here and then I just let it go. It's kind of funny that this thing was just working while I was taking a shower and brushing my teeth in the morning, which I think is kind of the huge advantage this type of AI autonomy provides because you can be off doing something, but you could still be productive because your agent is off and working. So this is just the sources it's searching here. You can see it's still actively thinking and I just find it cool to see that these are all references that I'm very familiar with and that, you know, it's, it's really, it really seems like it is doing a thorough job of finding the proper sources. So it did that for 15 minutes or so. And I went ahead and I pulled out the text. I wanted to look at it in a more clear way. So uh, you can see it made this table here, which is really cool, but I ended up putting it into a LaTeX document so I could get a better reference as to how, how much it actually wrote. So this is what it looks like in LaTeX. It's not really well formatted, so I apologize. Uh, you can see here that the citations don't really show up. They're just sort of double question marks here. Now, I'm going to be honest, reading through this report, I was maybe not the most impressed like if a human did this, I would be like, okay, this needs a lot of work. You can see here that there are just some sections that are just like one or two sentences. There are some citations, I believe, that were, were not properly correct, like this one, for example. This is actually my paper that it's referencing here. This galaxy does not actually exhibit a central CO void, but this one does, so it seemed to get confused there. And the writing, while it's, it's all technically correct, like the physics is right, it just reads maybe a bit simplistically and it, it writes like a graduate student who really just doesn't have the confidence quite yet in terms of what, of what they're talking about. And I, I can speak from experience that it's kind of similar to how I would used to write when I wasn't 
uh, very confident in myself as a as a graduate student. And it seems like it tried to make a plot, but it couldn't. So that's why there's this big gap here. And overall, the references that it cited, which aren't uh, appearing here, so let me go back down here. The references it cited, while these are all quality references, I was surprised that it didn't cite more because if you look at this table here, it has only about 10 different measurements, but just looking at this list and knowing because I did this for you know five years, I know for a fact it's missing a lot more measurements. So compare that to the table I have at the end of my dissertation because I did compile all of the different measurements in the field over the years up until the point that I graduated. So you can see that there is a lot more references than it properly cites. So that seems to be some sort of weakness. And I, I don't know why it didn't cite more because I know a lot of these papers are available through Archive, for example, as Archive is the preprint server. So you don't have to pay money to go behind a paywall or anything like that. And so I was just a little bit surprised that it didn't it didn't find more of these sources than it ended up providing. So, you know, I don't want to be too harsh on it. I think the formatting and the maybe lack of of quality sources as well as just some of these small things, right, where there's these slight inaccuracies in in referencing the citations that kind of kind of make me think, okay, you know, this is definitely the first version. It's not in its final state. And I think they even say that on the OpenAI website that it's not it's not perfect. So the limitations here, it says, uh, has limitations. It can sometimes hallucinate facts and responses or make incorrect inferences, though at a notably lower rate than existing chat GPT models, according to internal evaluations. It may struggle with distinguishing authoritative information from rumors and currently shows weakness in confidence calibration, often failing to convey uncertainty accurately. At launch, there may be minor formatting errors and reports and citations, and tasks may take longer to kick off. We expect all these issues to quickly improve with more usage and time. So I can corroborate all of that just by looking at my own dissertation, which took way longer than 15 minutes to, to compile. So I don't want to be too mean to deep research. I still think it's a really cool thing that I was able to just, you know, set it off and I can go and take a shower and have it work while I was not at the computer. So... That's a really cool feature, though, again, it's kind of use at your own risk and don't take everything it says as gospel. One other thing I'd like to point out is that I didn't even know about this, but Gemini also has deep research, Gemini Advanced 1.5 Pro, and apparently they've had it for over a month now, I think, and I just did not know that it existed. And so I found that very amusing that it's also called deep research, like OpenAI deep research, even though... It was Gemini that came out with it first. Now, I'm going to be honest, I didn't look too deeply into deep research from Gemini. I just gave it the same prompt and wanted it to create a report. And if I'm going to be honest, it's also fairly rudimentary, I would say. I don't think that it's as comprehensive as one would really want from a, say, graduate student who is making a literature review. It, again, just cites 10 sources, even though, like I said before, and in this table, there's only like you know 10 uh, galaxies here, even though when you compare it to, for example, my dissertation table, it's clearly lacking in some uh, sources. So again, it seems like Gemini Deep Research and OpenAI Deep Research still have a ways to go, though it is still a very cool concept that you can just have AI agents doing this kind of work for you. So that's basically it. I don't have much else to say other than it's a really cool feature that these companies are coming out with agents that can autonomously do work for you. Obviously, they're not perfect. They have some flaws, as I've mentioned in this video, but these are the worst versions of these models and they'll just continue to get better. So keep your eyes open for more models. I'm excited to see as this technology progresses because it's going to be really awesome, I think, for so many different people to have agents doing this kind of work in the background while you're off doing something else. I think it really does free you up to have perhaps more creative thinking time to solve uh, different kinds of problems that you might just be bogged down with having to do, you know, literature review on archive or on all these different research article websites. And so, this is a really, really cool feature, and I don't want the limitations to downplay the 
potential it has here, though there is still work to be done. So with that, thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it. I hope it was informative. I hope it wasn't too overwhelming with my own research domain in physics, but I just wanted to really see how well these models could do in a domain that I was very familiar with. So with that, thank you for watching. I'll be back with more videos and I'll see you next time.